This adventure is a hyper-focused Dragonlance lore-heavy experience by Tracy Hickman. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Lyceum. I'd like to take a moment to thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing the Dragonlance Nexus and RPG Geek websites, including the War of the Lance sourcebook for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. From time to time, you come across role-playing game designers that want to stretch their storytelling legs, so to speak. Designers who believe that a focus on story is as or more important than the mechanics of a game. Tracy Hickman is one of those designers. While researching this episode, I came across an article in RPG Geek about the Lyceum, and it noted that it was released on Tracy Hickman's website somewhere around 1996. Further digging into the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons version of this short adventure led me to the Dragonlance Nexus website where there were two interviews with Tracy Hickman noting that while the original adventure is no longer in circulation, Tracy Hickman was in talks with Jamie Chambers of Sovereign Press to adapt the adventure into a release of their War of the Lance sourcebook, which is where I originally discovered the adventure. This was all part of the 20th anniversary celebration of Dragonlance. While I am less excited to talk about the mechanics of any adventure module, I am interested in collecting a copy of the original Advanced Dungeons & Dragons version, so if anyone watching this has a copy and is willing to share it, I would make it available to my audience with credit to you. All of this being said, the Lyceum is more than simply a short adventure for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons or Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition. It's a story that connects the Lost Citadel, the Bridge of Stars, and the Lyceum itself to the post-War of the Lands era of Dragonlance with a wonderful story behind it. While this is a setting or lore video and not an adventure module walkthrough, I would direct anyone who wishes to run this module to the War of the Lands sourcebook. Let's dive into the story and remember that this is a spoiler discussion of the lore behind the adventure, so if you want it to be a surprise, stop watching now. I suppose the first question that should be addressed is, what is a lyceum? Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines it as a hall for public lectures or discussion. This is why, when researching the episode, I kept running into the Citadel of Light, which has many lyceums featured within. The ancient lyceum I am referencing today was once a school for beginning wizards and a repository of magical knowledge. In the original adventure, it was located in Nordmar, near the ancient ruins of Valkenord. This location was changed so as to be located along the northern coastline of Estwald near Calaman, or wherever the Dungeon Master desires. I prefer the original location. While the history of the Lyceum differs from its future use, it was left all but abandoned and isolated from the Cataclysm until after the War of the Lands and the Dark Queen's defeat. Its ancient use was one of the physical anchor points for the Lost Citadel, the tower once known as the Citadel of Mysteries, located in the Calchas Mountains, which was taken out of time and space by the gods of magic, Solinary, Lunatary, and Nuitary in the Age of Dreams. It was initially the first true bastion of magical knowledge in all of Kryn. However, following the magical devastation the wizards Corinthas, Ariane, and Shoud unleashed in the Second Dragon War, it was removed from Kryn and used to instruct these three mages in the arts of high sorcery, forming the wizards of high sorcery and defining the laws of magic. The Lyceum resonated with the Lost Citadel, acting as a nexus of arcane energies. The Lyceum was a secret storehouse of magical knowledge that the Orders of High Sorceries had to keep secret from the King Priest in the centuries that followed, as Istar would actively pillage and destroy magical artifacts, condemning and even killing wizards all across Ancelon. While it was sealed with powerful wards, agents of the King Priest ultimately did discover the Lyceum in the final years of the Age of Might and inflict great structural damage to its interior. The Lyceum remained abandoned until the Night of Doom, when the Lost Citadel once again connected to the world. The Gods of Light summoned their true clerics from all across Ancelon to depart Kryn as the gods were about to hurl a mountain into the planet, destroying Istar and sundering Kryn. 
It was because of the Lyceum acting as an anchor that allowed these priests to cross the Bridge of Stars, and it was here that three young heroes, Nicholas, Nicole, and Michael, stopped the black-robed wizard Azar with the aid of Raceland Majir from using the Bridge of Stars to open a portal to the Abyss to bring back priests and minions of Tachesis to Kryn. You can read all about this in the short story The Silken Threads by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, originally published in Tales 2, Volume 1, The Reign of Istar. Later, a cleric named Justin returned to the Lyceum to record the account of the Holy Passage and stored it in the Icon of Truth. Justin exists now as an immortal being, with one foot in Kryn and one in the next, studying the myriad creations from the Bridge of Stars. After the Cataclysm, the Lyceum remained abandoned and isolated until the War of the Lance. A small force of Draconians occupied it, breaking through its magical wards. After the war, the Red Dragon High Lord Rugo Heras, the Priestess of Tachesis, Mincy Terenthela, the Black Robed Wizard Carabanth, and the Young Red Dragon Ashbringer moved in as well. They generally ignored the locals until recently. They began abducting six civilians from the town of Turok. Their plans are to use the Bridge of Stars Carabanth told them about, and the black shards Mincy took from the Temple of Tachesis in Naraka, and force the kidnapped twins Garth and Marilynth Minorsa into recreating the tragedy of Barum Everman and his sister Jasla in order to connect the Bridge of Stars to the Abyss, opening a portal and bringing Rugo Harris's Dark Queen back to Kryn. As the heroes investigate the mysterious black clouds boiling over the countryside from the Lyceum, they see the Draconians have all but abandoned the ruins and must uncover the plot and Icon of Truth to stop it, learning more about the Night of Doom in the process. As this was a center of arcane instruction, all of the moons are represented as wings of the structure, black to the west, red to the north, and white to the east. The ruins require puzzle solving and traditional martial skills to face off against and defeat the Dragon High Lord and his allies, including the aid of Justin, who will assist in preventing access to the Gate of Souls and into the Beyond from the Bridge of Stars. This was the ultimate goal of Azar before the Cataclysm, and is why the Dragon High Lord is here now. Upon defeat, Justin sends the Lyceum into the River of Time, so the heroes will have to leave with whatever knowledge and treasure they gained expeditiously, as the Lyceum fades from everyone else's minds. This adventure is a massive payoff to the Night of Doom and the short story The Silken Threads, connecting your heroes with the rich tapestry that is Dragonlance's history. It's an adventure that would be a great sequel to any War of the Lands campaign in any edition you prefer. And that is all I have to say about the Lyceum. Do you enjoy Tracy Hickman's adventures? Have you heard of the Lyceum before? And finally, would you send your party into the Lyceum? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlands fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlands Saga, and until next time, remember, people want to believe in something, even if deep inside, they know it is false.